Hey guys, welcome back to Max Electronic. I hope you're doing absolutely amazing tonight. And in today's video, we will be looking at this Sherwood model AX3030R stereo integrated amplifier. Uh, it is uh, in a unknown condition. I don't know if it works. It's got a um, few inputs like a phono for the turntable, tuner, auxiliary, CD, tape, and external. It also has two remote control inputs and outputs. And it's got two zones, speakers A and B, from 8 to 16 ohms. So let's get started. When we get equipment in a condition like this, it's always the best to open it up first. Do not plug it in because we don't know what condition is it is inside, if the capacitors are leaked or if what else is going on. And by plugging it in, I know you can get excited and plug it in first to see if it works. You can actually do more damage. So I'm not going to plug it in just yet. I've removed all the necessary screws from the amp. So we're going to take the top off and have a look what's inside first. So here it is. And as we can see, it's very dirty. Very, very dirty. I can see that the uh, it's motorized servo for the volume control. I've seen those before. They're usually in older amps so that use potentiometers instead of a digital ones. I can already see that this cap is a bit blown up. So, so is this one a little bit, not much, but this one is a lot worse. You can probably see by the light reflection. Uh, so I'm going to pull it to bits and pieces, clean it up, uh, probably replace the caps. And once I clean it up, we'll have a look at the main board and everything else around. The first part I'll be removing is the back plate, which I've unscrewed already. And looks like the mains wire is soldered to this uh, little standby board. So I'm going to pull that together with a standby and plug the transformer here and unplug the control board. There we go, so that's our back. So I'll clean that up, or we can check it out now. Oh, let's have a look what we've got here. We've got a little transformer, a relay. Is that a relay? Yes, that's a relay. Uh, two fuses, capacitors, and a little, what is it? K7806, a so six volt voltage regulator. And that's it. So let's move on to the other components. Now I'm going to remove the faceplate, but before I do, I've noted, uh, noticed that in this amplifier, the connectors are all identical. So it's easy to pull it out and then mix the cables up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just mark, so you can see I'll turn it around. And for example, this connector, I'll do just one line across both connectors. With this one, I'll do two lines. And with this one, I'll do three. So this way, when I plug them back in, I know which one goes where. So let's remove that faceplate. It is not easy. There we go, we've got one more here that I will actually mark because it's identical. Okay, there we go. So we got standby and we got that big one. So there comes the faceplate and it's got some stuff in it. Looks like eggs. There are eggs inside. I'll show it to you in a second. So let's pull apart the faceplate and clean it up before we get to the main amp. All the screws have been removed, so let's pull this out. That's the main board. Um, there we go. It's got a few LEDs on there, which I'll probably change just for fun of it. A few buttons. Uh, probably the microcontroller on top. Infrared receiver, power LED, power button. So here are the eggs. They're all hatched. Let me zoom in so you can see it better. They're very fragile as well. It's like a little chicken eggs, but they're not. I think that's geckos. So I'm going to remove that motorized uh, volume control. 
I think I've unscrewed it all. Very tight fit. There we go. So here's our motorized controller. As you can see, it's got a standard uh, stereo pot. And it's got um, a little gearbox and a little motor. So that usually drives, and that's the motor controller there. And what is that cheap? Kia 4559. So yeah, you don't see those anymore in the receivers. They fun. I'm gonna clean this plate and uh, refurble that and I clean those. I'm pretty sure the caps in here is still good. So I'll be back after I clean all those eggshells and all of that stuff inside and I might change a few LEDs on here as well just for fun of it. And I'll be uh, and then I'll pull it together and I'll come back and we'll check out the main board. The faceplate has been done. It is completely clean and shiny. As you can see, I've also replaced a few LEDs, just the center ones for the CD aux and the tuner ones. Uh, what else? For the, I haven't checked the trim port on that. Just uh, if it's crackly, I can always easily remove it quickly. So everything's been cleaned up. Now let's get the main um, assay on the table and have a look at this board and check out the transistors and MOSFETs, see if they short it. I have uh, disassembled uh, all the parts that were holding the main board and the MOSFETs together. So I've disconnected also those uh, transformer wires for the main power supply and for the thermocouple. So there's actually a little thermocouple here on the transformer right here attached to it, just I guess so it doesn't overheat. So I'm going to pull all this out together. The transformer stays and it's very dirty. Uh, looks clean down the bottom though. So what I'm going to do with this now is we're going to check the caps. Obviously those two got to go. They um, are about um, 4700 microfarad and I can't see the voltage. I think it's 50 volts. So they're going to go. And I'll check up the other caps. And the MOSFETs, we're going to bust through the MOSFETs, see if any of those are shorted. I've uh, changed the caps in the board. Actually, you'd be surprised, but those two were actually fine. Uh, and what you thought that was bloating is actually just a plastic and you can push it in. You can feel it's just a top cover. I replaced that 470 microfarad uh, 16 volts, I believe it is. Uh, the rest of them I've tested and they're all good. Everything seems fine. So I'm going to quickly buzz through the MOSFETs and reassemble the amp and we can test it out before I put the top cover on. The amp is now nice and clean, so everything inside is as well. So I'm ready to turn it on. So here we go, we're just testing the power. The light came on, that is in the standby, let's turn it on. Okay, and it goes straight into the standby. So that means we have a problem on the main board. So let's investigate that further. I found the problem in the amp. It was this uh, MOSFETs. There's actually a little one that was blown. And when we turned it on, it blew the big one. So one of them is good and uh, the other two are bad. So I decided to replace them with a better ones, uh, which is I think this is by SIK. This is a Toshiba ones. There's all three of them. I've matched them. They're actually a, a donor ones from um, Yamaha receiver. <clears throat> That's got blown main board. And the replacement can't, cannot be found. So I've decided to use it as a donor. So uh, besides replacing just one channel, because there's only one channel that was blown, the second one's good. I've decided that I'm going to replace both channels because I've got another two Toshibas. And uh, this, they're actually better ones than those ones. So the quality should be better. I'm going to put them in into the uh, main board. And uh, then we'll try testing it out again. All the MOSFETs have been replaced. So they're all in there. Now let's do the attempt number two at turning it on. So here goes the mains. And we've got the red light. And now let's try turning it on. So 
So, so far, nothing. Let's check the fuses. Of course, the fuse has gone. That's uh, the one. It is really blown up. Even glass got cracked. That's the output fuse on the transformer. So that's because the MOSFETs got shorted. Anyway, let's give it another try. So I turned it on and let's power it up and see if it actually works. So far, so good. Okay, so the CD LED isn't working. So I guess I'll have to replace that. That's supposed to be a blue LED. White one's quite bright as well. So that's all good. Let's now try, um, the speakers are good as well. Let's try plugging in the speakers and putting some sound through it, see if that will work. Okay, I've got a couple of um, Sony speakers plugged in here. They're small, but that'll do just for now. So I'm gonna select the input, which is aux. Give me a second. And I'm going to enable here, I don't know if you can see, just the A speakers, which is what we're doing right now. And let's give it a go. So I'm going to play something from YouTube. Pretty good. Let's, uh, let's try adjusting the balances. I think that's bass. Trebles. And balance. All smooth. Let's try disabling the A speakers. And let's, uh, let me just plug them in into the B speakers. And now that I've got it in the B speakers, let's try activating them. That is very loud. Now let's try different inputs. Let's go for tuna. Tuna is good. So that works. Let me put it together and replace um, that blue LED that's supposed to be blue and then we'll have a look at the ready product. The amp is now assembled and ready to go. So let's check it out. The CD light now works and everything else works as well. I might use it in a studio. You know, the tape monitor, what happens is it overrides any signal that's coming in and just monitors the, those external inputs. That'd be handy for something like a signal tracer where you want to use it. You quickly press that button and you use it and then you unmute it again and place whatever it is. The direct, what I found, that is overrides all those controls to balance, trebles, and a bass. It just puts it directly through the amp, except the volume, of course. And loudness didn't make any difference, but I'm sure it does something. So let's have a listen at uh, the sound. <laughs> As you can hear, this changes the um, balance, but as soon as I click direct, now this controls don't work at all. And like I said, this overrides it, and loudness. I guess it gives it that maybe this volume kind of feeling. 
But there it is. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We are on Patreon as well if you'd like to support us financially. So click that like button. I will see you next time. My name is Max. Bye.